Hello, hello. Now that we have the basic setups for the guide process, it's time to start on to understand how the masking works. So we have several types of masking. First is the override that will have guide attributes, skin attributes or texture attributes, guides being the curves attributes or the per point attributes we bring in. Skin again is the geo attributes and the texture attributes are the ones that we bring from a different software. So Mari, Substance, Photoshop, whatever you want. But also we have masking. Masking is an important feature because it has the main blend. And if you turn down this main blend, you can see that the effect gets completely removed, which is quite similar that if I just change the amplitude, but this one is the main driver, not of the operator, but of the whole node. So if we have more than one operator, it's also going to remove it. So that's something that it's important. And we also have an override. So you can drive the whole node by guide attribute, skin attribute, or texture attribute. Once you jump into this, you can also use two different types of masking. You have curve mask, and we have noise mask. Both of them are visualized by the visualized mask. So it's important that you have this check on to be able to see the effect. And we're using the noise because it's the easier one to actually notice the effect. And we can see that the curve ramp, it's black where we don't have the effect and it's red, bright red where we have the effect. So first I hate Houdini curves because they're really, really hard to select, but I'm going to bring the curve down and you can see that the effect of the tips gets from a bright red to black. And now we control this on the middle effects. If we wanted more on the root or more on the tip, and we can just change the values just on the tip or none. So we can change, we can add more curve. We can remove them completely. We can just delete the, the pointer here. We, I don't remember how to delete it. Oh, wow. Here was that? Yeah. With that one. And you can create a new one there. Let's just delete this one. And you can just bring select and try to move it down. And then yeah, you can have it just on curve. So you can do whatever you want with this. Also, you have the fall off shape. So you can control the middle one easily with this value. So it's going to be flat or on everything but roots just on tips. This is a good one influence width. So you can have on left and right controls of the point that you select uh, effect position. Where do you want the effect to happen? If you want it on the tips, on the roots, nowhere. And you have range max. So you can control the range area where you want this effect to happen. You can see it from here. If you want it on no range max, also range max, the range max being one. And you also have the range as a absolute as absolute length value. So this is important also if you have an absolute length value instead of just normal value. So this is basically curve masking. So let me turn off clump masking and go directly to noise mask. The first time that you work on noise mask can be odd if you're not used to procedurals or the Houdini itself. But we have an amount, again, an override for the amount, that this is going to be just a noise mask amount. So bear in mind, this is amount, this is noise mask. You have a frequency for the noise. It's really hard to read just on guides. But the easier one, the easier way to read is if you move this to one and this to zero, which should have been the default value that you get of this noise mask when you create this, because with both on five, it's super hard to read and I always just change it back to one and zero. So we have a proper input of the effect. And what does it does? So the gain is going to be the smoothness of the effect. So the gain is just going to be basic contrast and smoothness. The bias 
is going to increase the influence. So if you think the bias as just the curve or the increase of percentage of effect, so let's say that this is just 10% of the curve gets affected, then this is 25% of the curves, this is 50% of the curves, and this will be with a really high gain, so they are super contrasty. And if I turn down my uh, noise frequency, you will be able to see it way better. Let me just jump into the guide curve and let's create a thicker guide curve, maybe 0.2. No, no, that's way too much, 0.02, that's better. So you can see this better from the inside. So this is the basic value that I like to use, gain zero, bias one. So the more you increase the bias, you can see the more percentage of the effect is going to affect. So this will be 50%, there are 50, 50% of our hairs are affected, but this will be under the noise frequency value. And if, with a gain of one, we will sh have sharp lines there. If we reduce our gain, you can see how the fall off starts to appear and they start to blend. A value of zero gain will have almost the same effect with the whole thing. And the scale is just a normal scale. The smaller you get, the more it's going to affect. And the bigger you go, the more per strand is going to be. So this is important when you have something like this, uh, because if you have this level of detail, something like this is just 10%, 20% of the hairs, you just add one more. And if you go for, let's say, this instead of the frizz, remember the length has to be first always. Let me just go and remove the activate. We have this as a length, so it's a nice length. And then let's activate the second one and let's put a freeze here. So voila, we have a nice uh, flyaways groom with a nice amplitude. Let's reduce the scale. And now we can play a little bit with the max length a new or a good randomize and if we go to masking again we can play with the gain if we want to have more even effect or we can increase the amount of hairs reduce the amount of hairs that have this effect in this case we're talking about guides but again this will be applicable to the gap the masking of the hairs too we don't normally do this for guides remember we don't normally do this for guides. Flyaway guides is not a thing and technically should not be a thing because it will create some distortion on the hair that if you go to the actual hair, you will see some spikes right there that they look odd and they're normally considered a non-proper guide distribution. So it's important not to do it on guides, but this was just for the sake of explaining how masking work on the guide process node and further along when we work on a per strand level. So thank you for following the tutorial and I hope you liked it. And if we add this one here, you will see that now the effect is just on the tips and with less effect on the length. Thank you so much and see you on the next one.